Eric is going to help me find Edgar. Okay, so uh, Benedict, as a fan of your work, I know that your voice is often very important. Uh, in Eric, Vincent uses his voice in different ways, uh, in addition to the American accent. Um, how did you see this character in your career and what new did he bring to you? Um, well, I guess there were three voices. Um, the voice of uh, Bug, in, uh, as in Bug and Mush in Good Day Sunshine at the beginning, and then Vincent's voice himself, and and Eric, who's this sort of manifestation of both his son's drawings and, and the inner workings of his failing, flailing psyche. Um, and it was really important for me to be able to authenticate that because I'm not a New Yorker, I'm an Englishman, and I had to work hard opposite a very authentic actress who is very authentically, well, more authentically New York than, than I could ever be. <laughs> And uh, I kind of, yeah, I had a very good dialect coach, so I, I worked hard and, and hopefully the results are strong enough to pass muster, as they say. Um, I was often called that by Booch, a uh, uh, brilliant, natural, gifted, first time, extraordinary actor who plays our son, Edgar Ivan. And um, yeah, he's a New Yorker. He just, what was that? What did you just say? <laughs> just like cut off at the knees going, oh, shh, I've been found out by a nine year old. Um, so yeah, it was important, and the the differentiation in tone obviously was very important. Uh, Bug's voice I found very easily for some reason. Uh, Eric I had an inclination towards, and I remember experimenting with Lucy at some point, and Abby maybe. I can't remember when I first offered them something. Oh, we like that, and I was like, oh Christ, well, maybe I'm locked in, and went around the houses a bit to come back to the first uh, offering, and that, that's how we ended up with Eric as this gruff, white collar, talk no nonsense New Yorker. <laughs> That's so nice. Um, and Gabby, Cassie is a character with many layers and who is clearly in pain. For you, what was the biggest challenge of playing this character, this mother? Well, I think it was anticipating, actually, the state of being that I was, uh, you know, going to have to enter into leading up to the shoot. Um, I'd, I'd never done anything like that, having to be sort of in a state of grief and pain for months on end. I didn't really know what my entry point and exit point was going to be what my I don't know what my damn process is still so it was um I guess anticipating um uh, you know the unknown uh once we began you know I found the same challenges that I I always find um regardless of the situation my character is in just on any given day sort of getting tripped up by something and having to find you know find what needs to be tweaked um I'm very bad at pretending, like extremely bad. So I found it to be a real challenge when I had to like answer the phone and hear bad news and nobody's on the other end. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, when I got to like play out an actual real scene with real emotions and real feelings against an extraordinary actor like Benedict or all of our other beautiful castmates, um, then it was, you know, as easy or difficult as, as any job might be on any given day and a real joy because there was real juicy stuff to work with. Uh, my first question, Abby, can you tell me a little bit about your inspirations and what was it like to create a show like this? Um, well, I wanted to write about this moment in history which I'd experienced. I'd uh, been a nanny for a while in New York at that time in the mid eighties. And so I wanted to write something through the prism of a child. Um, and certainly the disappearance of a child felt like a really good engine for this drama. Uh, I think the 80s is very compelling because although it's near history, it has huge relevance for today. So many of the issues that I think they were dealing with at the time, gentrification, um, low-income families trying to find a place to live, uh, you know, institutionalized racism, corruption within government office, they, they felt, you know, very relevant. And then at its heart, it, it was this period of the AIDS epidemic and there was so much threat and fear around that time that... It felt like a very destabilized city that was trying to make sense of itself. And so it just felt like a great place to put another mystery, which was the disappearance of a child. Mankinley, Letrite is a character that is very different from what you imagine um, as a detective to be. Um, what was your reaction when you first read the character? And can you tell me a little bit about the process of becoming him? Yes. Uh, my reaction when I first read it was yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I was really excited that um, uh, Abby and Lucy were interested in um, him as a whole person, a, a whole human, and uh, that we would see him both functionally at work and during the investigation, but also at home and um, 
uh, with the love of his life and uh, he's dying from AIDS and uh, he, he brings a very real world life issue uh, uh, to like a human experiential level uh, where like how wh what happens when you're mourning someone and uh, the who you are is um, not welcome at work and it feels like a hostile environment uh, so like watching him balance all that stuff was really exciting when I saw it on the page uh, I was thrilled because it means that I would be challenged and get to honor a journey that was actually quite difficult in the 80s. And how was it for you to be in, in the 80s? Uh, like with the costumes, with the hair, how was it for you? Well, my head was a little bit warmer because I had hair mm -hmm. on it. Uh, uh, and actually, th that was a cool journey like early on with like finding who this man is, is, being able to look in the mirror and see someone slightly different than myself. Um, uh, I was really excited with the costume fittings too because like, when you put clothes on like that, you, you just feel slightly different when you put the shoes and the suits on. Uh, and then even to have some of the things where I'm wearing slightly different things at home where he's more comfortable, uh, I was constantly thinking about this notion of the public and private self. And that was reflected often with what I had on my body. Whoa.